The next question we're going to answer is, could we be looking at a child with measles? This has um, become an important question now. The measles almost faded um, out of existence after widespread vaccination was introduced, but vaccination rates did drop off in most Western countries, and uh, we're starting to see a bit of a resurgence of measles as a result. So who do we have to be particularly careful about measles with? So infants who haven't been fully vaccinated yet, people who haven't uh, been vaccinated at any age and then people who can't be vaccinated or don't have a sufficient response to vaccines because they're immunodeficient and then migrants or refugees especially if it's recent and especially if they didn't necessarily complete a course of vaccination in their childhood so depending on where they've come from that might be more of a concern so measles is a highly infectious viral disease and it goes through these three stages you get the incubation phase then you get a prodrome and then you get the development of the rash uh, and I'll go through each of those stages now. So the first one is incubation. So from the time of exposure, and you really don't need much exposure because it's a highly infectious airborne disease, you then have about 10 days of incubation where often people are asymptomatic. Um, they don't have any signs of developing measles. Then from, from about day 10, can be day 12, you go into this next phase, which is the prodrome. So this is like a viral illness, usually lasts two to five days. And it, it's kind of a, a typical kind of flu -y illness, you've got fever, malaise, coryza, and then you usually also get conjunctivitis. A couple of days into this um, prodrome, you get coplic spots in the mouth, and I'll show a picture of those in a minute. So the coplic spots are these blue whitish spots that are usually opposite the first molars, and they occur one or two days before the rash appears, so a couple of days into the prodrome. And you can see here on the inside of this child's mouth, you can see these little white spots uh, just adjacent to the, to the uh, molars. Um, so those are a, a key sign of measles, and they really give you a clue that this, this person has measles. The final thing is the rash. So about four days usually after the prodrome starts, um, you get these flat red spots that typically start on the face and spread down into the trunk. And sometimes they join up and become what's called confluent. And the rash usually coincides with a high fever. They might have had a fever before in the prodrome, but you, typically when the rash develops, there's a high fever of greater than 40 degrees Celsius. This is the typical picture of the rash. It's called a mobiliform rash. So you can see this widespread flat, red spots um, across the patient's back and this would be usually a blanching rash and this is one of the uh, typical exanthems um, this is the 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 rash associated with measles here's another picture of a little boy with the measles rash on his chest so you can see these flat red spots uh, in the middle that typically would have started on his face and then spread down into the trunk as the rash progressed so that's it for measles. I'm not going to go through treatment too much, which is mainly supportive, but it's an important thing to recognise because it still has a high rate of complications, something that you need to know about, and it has uh, important public health implications as well. So get good at recognising measles. Remember, like with the other rashes, once you recognise it, you can look up the management and what to do. But in this case, it's mainly supportive. Um, so the next topic we're going to do is, could this be other severe illnesses uh, that are associated with rashes? So um, listen to that video if you want to know about that topic.